Now the world of work is undergoing a seismic shift with new technologies and concepts rapidly reshaping the job market. As companies grapple with the changes brought about by the digital revolution, the job landscape is poised for significant transformation. These changes extend beyond just the types of jobs available, but also how work is fundamentally done. Traditional roles are being redefined and replaced by novel positions that didn't exist just a few years ago. Now, this profound shift has major implications for the future of employment. In a Web3 driven economy, work structures can become more flexible and autonomous, making the marketplace increasingly competitive. For job seekers, this translates to a host of exciting new opportunities. On today's episode of Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, we will explore this evolving future of work and examine how Web3 blockchain technology is reshaping the job market. I'm your host, Justin Akadonia, and welcome to the show. Web3 is reshaping not only the internet, but the very nature of work. As we transition to a more decentralized, user-centric online ecosystem, job seekers have a unique chance to be part of this transformative shift by developing an understanding of the Web3 landscape and acquiring relevant skills. You can position yourself at the vanguard of this burgeoning job market. Olado Tsun Wilfred Akongbe is the CMO of Flamecap, a platform for OTC crypto exchanges. He now joins me for further discussions. Good morning to you, Dotton. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here on Fox TV uh, for the very first time. I'm very excited to join this discussion and to right. take my two cents on the uh, current discussion about the future of work and how blockchain is joining the job market. It's a great pleasure to be here. All right, fine. Let's just uh, dive straight into it now. For those who may not understand, just uh, break it down quickly to us uh, what Web3 is about and uh, the basic principles of blockchain technology and its relevance to the job market. So, uh, Web3 is uh, the future of internet, like uh, the next future, of the next generation of internet, actually. Coming from where we are right now, we have uh, the big giants in the space, the Facebook, the Google. These are examples of Web2. Uh, Web2 often is a very centralized way. Uh, trying to break it down, it means every user on, on Facebook or Google are uh, basically users. You just go to the platform where you plug in and you play. You do not own any of this information, even though the information are yours, the data is yours. But Web3 is looking at a different approach where data is decentralized, where users can own their data, they can decide how they want to use their data. So, it's bringing a different approach to how things are being done currently. To be in the finance sector, in the technology sector, in the health sector, there are no central authorities in Web3. Everybody is a particular concept in Web3. So this is giving a, a different approach to how we do things. Imagine banking and finance, each customer being actually a stakeholder in the, in the bank. So Web3 is a different approach to us, how we do things generally. So definitely, there needs to be, there has to be a different approach how the job is done, new career has to come in, new set of skills has to be learned, people have to do things differently. Mm -hmm. So the three has positioned us to do things differently and to learn things differently. All right. So fine. Uh, blockchain, uh, how is it transforming uh, traditional job roles across various industries and what new roles have emerged as a result of blockchain and Web3 advancements? Uh, blockchain is a decentralized artificial ledger. There are no, like I said before, there are no central authorities. Everybody is a stakeholder on the platform and on the blockchain itself. And also, blockchain aims to automate processes and and a lot of processes are being streamlined on the blockchain. Oh. It reduces the need for intermediaries. It reduces the need for third parties to act on on end processes. So. Then it requires a new set of skills, new set of professionals are being introduced into the blockchain because it's a technological, technologically focused uh, sector. 
So there needs to be some new set of skills, new set of professionals. So some of the most sought after professionals in, in the blockchain space are blockchain developers. We need people that can develop blockchain because it's actually a very nascent technology. Okay. It's kind of very, very technical. So we need more hands. We need more people to learn about technology. Also, we have a blockchain a project manager. So after the blockchain has been developed, we need people to manage the project, to onboard other people. To coordinate what is being done, to coordinate projects and teams, the blockchain project manager we need a blockchain and crypto compliance analyst. So what does I mean? What does that word mean? It means it means that okay, we need people that could find a compromise between this technology and also between regulation. Because for each uh, technological advancement, there is always a war between the government and the technology. Okay. How do we balance these things out? So we need people that will find the balance between the regulation and the technology. So these are a few roles. They are like the earthquake that are currently oh. blockchain experts, blockchain developers, a blockchain project manager, and mm. blockchain uh, regulators. Okay, fine. I'm sure I'm thinking in my head it's not really an all commerce um, affairs. Uh, you might need to get some relevant um, skills. Specifically, are there uh, essential skills for professionals looking to enter the blockchain web three uh, market and uh, just how can they actually gain these skills so uh web three is not totally like a new technology so it's like an advancement mm. of the previous uh technology so we can start from our fundamental skills that are been learned but new skills have to be learned so some of the new skills that have to be learned uh for blockchain developer you need to learn uh, how to write some new uh, programming languages. You need to learn how to write Solidity. You need to, that's for smart contracts. You need to uh, learn how to code in Rust. Uh, Rust is one of the um, famous programming languages. Also, so that is the second part, uh, aspect of, of blockchain. You need new technical knowledge, how to code, how to write what? smart contracts, oh. Solidity, learn Rust. Also, uh, since blockchain is a, is a mix of finance and technology, yeah. You need to learn about financial markets, you need some kind of financial education, you need some kind of financial knowledge. So it has to be up to date uh, because you can't just base on the economic aspect of so okay. the economic aspect of blockchain. So you need that. Okay. But also we have the soft skills, which is the communication communication skills, human interaction and all that. All of this also will be a uh, very, very valuable right. in Web three. So the technical skills, mm. the finance skills and also the soft skills. Okay. Uh, very quickly now, so we can get into other aspects now, but still on um, the aspect of um, skills, uh, are there specific courses, certifications, and uh, what roles uh, do universities and, of course, our educational institutions play in preparing the workforce for these roles? So, uh, blockchain and Web3 are still massive. A lot of educational resources are being produced on a day-to-day basis, but uh, the internet is kind of uh, very, very much for any kind of learning you want to do. So there are a lot of online courses, online materials that you can pick up as an enthusiast or someone curious about this over three things and you can pick up these materials and learn and develop these skills. Also universities are getting into the space, developing tailored materials, tailored lectures, tailored courses for blockchain and web three. A good example is University of Nicosia. We have a master's degree in digital currency which encompasses blockchain, web three and digital currency. Also we have the likes of Cornell University. Personally, I've taken a lot of courses from Cornell University about blockchain researchers and related uh, blockchain and digital currency. So, universities are coming to play, mm. and there are also online platforms like University, like EBS, and all that where people can learn mm. about blockchain and web. Uh, Okay, let's talk about other aspects, uh, in as much as we'll talk about key responsibilities and required skill sets, but then. Um, how is the decentralized nature of blockchain influencing remote work trends and what opportunities does it provide for remote and freelance work? Okay, uh, blockchain itself, for um, the majority of the blockchain, it is open source, which means anyone can contribute. Mm. So this is a room for a remote worker to contribute from any part of the world, especially for consultants, for developers, you can work from the corner of the room. So it's it's very, very easy to be part of the functional team in the blockchain ecosystem. And also, in the blockchain ecosystem, there's something we call the DAO, 
centralized autonomous organization. So you don't need to you don't need to be physically present in a, in a uh, location or an office. So you could work remotely. A good example of the decentralized way of working and blocking ecosystem is the Ethereum Foundation. Ethereum Foundation has up to 4,000 developers and we do not have like a physical location. They all code and they all commit, they all contribute to the ecosystem remotely and in a very decentralized way. So uh, the nature of work in blockchain is also, it shows and it it's radiates the old essence of the technology that okay, what can be done by the centralized? The network itself is decentralized. You can contribute to the network in a very remote way. You don't need to be physically present. And yes, people have been doing that. I've been working in the blockchain space for yeah. uh, more than five years. I've never been in an office. Yeah. So it's totally decentralized and remote. Okay, fine. As uh, laudable and beautiful as all of these um, sound, I'm sure there might be some challenges or maybe barriers uh, individuals face when entering the blockchain and um, Web3 job market. I don't know if you can run us uh, through them and um, how these uh, barriers and challenges can be addressed by both job seekers and the employers. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of the major barriers for blockchain enthusiasts and people who are interested in getting to blockchain is the technicality of, of the whole blockchain thing. Like I said, blockchain is still very massive and technology and it's very, very technical. So people need to learn and endure uh, the learning process. Also, uh, generally, uh, mass adoption is not getting to uh, blockchain yet. We are just getting there. So we still have a lot of time, a lot of things to do. So as to uh, demystify the whole blockchain thing and to make it as simple as possible. Also, the general problem of not having work experience, not uh, having anything to write over about when it comes to blockchain and web three, mm. which is like a major uh, roadblock uh, for a lot of employers and uh, employees, rather. Yeah. So, this is what people can do in the blockchain. I would advise people to volunteer so you don't have to uh, get paid mm. first. Volunteer so by then you learn some skills, you get some exposure. Exposure rather, and also contribute to blockchain. It's an open source. Anybody can contribute. The more you contribute, the more relevant you become. The more exposure you get, the more open you get to work and you meet people. Also, there are lots of educational activities, a lot of educational events like meetups, conferences. You can attend all of these. You can all of these events rather, and you can meet people. From there, you connect and you you generally uh who is who and yeah. So these are the things you could do right. to get into into the web three space. Okay. Additionally, uh, since it's a, it's still um, a bit uh, nascent in uh, our country or Africa as it is, although it's not really a new technology. You know, how are traditional companies integrating blockchain technology into their operations, and how is uh, blockchain really influencing the freelance and gig economy? Okay, traditional companies, uh, most of the early banks and some companies, yeah. uh, yeah, they are integrating blockchain, like the famous big modern uh, chip bank, they are already using blockchain for cross border transactions. A uh, cross border transaction is actually one of the uh, very difficult transactions to do because it requires a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of verification, mm -hmm. and complex people and, and intermediaries. So imagine we keep doing all of this. State and commerce will be slow down and all that. But using blockchain, which makes settlement very, very fast within seconds and minutes, as uh, if you more than chase down that, able to eradicate delay and all, and a lot of wasted of time and intermediaries. Also, Ripple Labs have, been, have developed a uh, similar technology, how to make transactions borderless and all that. So these are the traditional, these are the ways traditional banks and traditional institutions are making use of. Uh, blockchain technology. Yes, but the big and uh, and freelance economy. Yeah, people could definitely get to work on blockchain uh, platform. We have angel list in angel list in the platform where people could start a job from any part of the world. It's a freelance and also a full time uh, website where people can get people and and take freelance jobs. I have a lot of friends who have been doing this blockchain thing for years. We all freelance and we all work full time at some point. So, yeah, it's a lot of opportunities uh, right there in the 
All right, so let's uh, move forward. Uh, what platforms or services are utilizing this blockchain technology to support freelance workers? And what advantages uh, do smart contracts offer to both employers and employees? Okay, uh, for smart contracts, uh, smart contract basically is a self-executing contract where we are no need for intermediaries and Agreed uh, transactions are being executed. For example, let's say I'm a real estate guy. Yeah. I actually want to make a transaction. I want to sell like a piece of land or something like that. So the client and myself we write a contract. We get we get the agreement in the contract and we automate it to write any lines of code. The moment some of these requirements are, are met from my end and also from the client's end. The contract is a piece of the back scanning. You don't need you don't have to wait for for third parties to confirm whether this has been done, this has been confirmed, the quality of the job, everything is confirmed by a line of code. It is done online, it is done on chain, and it's very transparent and everyone is seeing it. So instead of wasting time, instead of taking too long to confirm, instead of uh putting myself or putting the old business in jeopardy because they are bad actors. People are pulled out from this and all that. Everything is on chain. And once the agreement is, is reached by the two parties, the contract is repeat and, and the mission is done. So we move to the next one. And businesses are being done, settlements are being made in a very short time. And trust is being placed uh, on, in all businesses. So this is uh, a very good thing. And also, smart contracts can also be used to verify a lot of things, supply chain management and all that, to check needs. Draws to check me to take our product and all that. The smart contract gives the opportunity for that and it automates things and reduces time and, and also uh, the effort and fees put into these uh, businesses. So, this is where our uh, blockchain oh. smart contract rather can be used. So, as regards the freelance are uh, for blockchain developers, Bitcoin is a platform where Bitcoin developers or blockchain developers rather can pick up uh, freelance work and gigs. Okay, so as we round off right now, uh, what do you see as the future trends in blockchain and Web3 technology and its impact on the job market? Well, uh, the future trend, now is the future, the future is now. I and mean, we've seen how people can work in the future, how people can be engaged in the blockchain space, and how people can make a living uh, and also contribute to their community hmm. through working in the blockchain and Web3 uh, sector. So it's, it's it's an industry that is uh, meant to go. It is it is a promise. It is a promising uh, industry and it's going to go for that time. So we we seen the US government invest uh, billions of dollars into the blockchain and web three industry, trying to decide what's going to happen, what is happening, let's how to position ourselves. So I'm going to like, uh, to say young uh, professional. Mm. To try and position themselves in the web three space. It's the future of work. It's the future of things. It's the future of the internet. And we all see. Mm. Uh, we all can. We can tell what what will happen when you key into some very very early investment or early technological changes. So it is the future of work and it is the future of things. It can only get better from here. Okay, on the final notes, last words right now. In terms of support, in terms of uh, from all um, stakeholders, even government inclusive and active players, what more can be done so that it can be uh, really, really appreciated here in Nigeria and of course um, Africa in uh, the large um, extent? Okay, uh, the government has a very big role to play in any movement. So if you can see the government play a more active role, a more intentional role, so what? Educating people about blockchain, about the web three, it will give some sort of trust, some sort of belief to the whole population. Because as of, as of now, a lot of people still see web three, blockchain, and all of this as scam or something that is not uh, relevant or something that is ephemeral and we we fade up uh, yeah. with, with time. So if we can see government, if we can see the government uh, actively engaging. Blockchain and web three space. It oh. gives some kind of assurance, some kind of trust, and to prepare a lot of youth. It's actually a technology for the youth, for everybody. But the youth are actually 
it will mostly uh, the most engaged accept of people in the right. blockchain. So you can have some kind of social impact, some kind of financial inclusion for the youth. Okay. Um, government initiative and uh, okay. engagement in the state. All right, we must say a very big uh, thank you to you. We have been speaking with Olado Tsung Akongbe. He's the CMO of Flame Cap. Many thanks for the wonderful inputs that you have brought on this discussion, the future of work and how blockchain and Web3 is actually impacting the job market. Many thanks once again for your time. Sure. My pleasure to be here. Too. All right. That's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.